So Tower of Fantasy is about to launch in about two days and unfortunately I have seen a lot of misinformation going around and it's not because people are trying to be malicious and trying to mislead people or anything it's because it's actually just a little bit confusing so if I click into Cobalt B SSR Simulacrum you can see over here China Global Flame Resonance what the frick is going on man and so what you just saw was essentially Cobalt B being a lot better than she normally was in terms of tier lists or whatever and so in this video I want to point out some areas in which we have to be really really careful because like I said nobody is doing this on purpose it's mainly just because there is stuff clashing from CN versus the data mines versus what we were seeing in like the uh, closed beta tests etc etc hi welcome back to the channel my name is Lace this is a tower of fantasy video and in this video we'll be talking about a couple of different areas in which we just need to be a little bit more mindful as we get into the game itself the only information that is 100% confirmed is the stuff in the game and then on top of that I am going to go through uh, 15 pretty freaking important tips. I actually had only about like six or seven of these ones and then I found this one so shout out to your boy Zakum hashtag 3080 for putting this one together but my guys before we get here again back to this one over here. Okay let me kind of like recap as to what exactly just happened. Generally speaking there are four units known as the big four and these big four units are incredibly incredibly important because they give a flat 20% damage bonus and 40% damage resistance of their element for each of the elements. So we've got Vault we've got the ice one we've got the fire and we've got the physical and so what that means is that these four units over here are critical to each of their elemental teams as you can see we've got the vault team ice team and unfortunately you can't see it, but there's a flame and a physical now what that means is that the value of these four units are dramatically higher than some of the others but what we've noticed is that some of the characters in the global version the data mine as you can see we've got the global toggle on this guy if I actually turn this off you will see that in the China version it doesn't have this flame resonance where you get flame attack by 15% and flame resistance by 25%. So in China, that means that Cobalt is actually not a top priority, but in global, considering Cobalt as well as some of the others, they are actually going to have incredible value almost to like the level of these guys over here. So Cobalt is the one who is going to be receiving the flame resonance. After that, we are going to have Claudia over here and Claudia is going to be providing the physical resonance. So as you can see, this is almost identical to this one over here. And then for global, we have Nemesis over here in which you can see the toggle global China it's a little bit different but we are going to be getting the vault attack plus 15% and the vault resistance plus 25 on the global version and as far as I can tell I don't think there are going to be any characters at launch which are going to be providing the ice bonus so what that means is that the best teams at launch are going to be the physical the fire and the electric the vault however 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 big big caveats you just got to actually go in make sure that this is what is actually in the game before we go target these characters and so if I'm actually wrong about these characters, so if I go back to Cobalt B and Global, it turns out that she doesn't actually have this flame resonance over here, then Cobalt's value is, it's just going to diminish very, very greatly. And so therefore she isn't like giga giga top tier. All right, so that's the first thing that I kind of wanted to say. There are some discrepancies between the data mines, between the CBT, between like the CN versions. Just be careful, read the text and know why exactly they are so busted, okay? Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the gacha over here. So a lot of people have talked about how awesome than this freaking gacha is because we've got like the AT pity over here you can see AT pity on the gold nucleuses and then at AT pity there is a 50 50 chance okay I don't think I okay it's down here it's a 50 50 percent chance that you will be getting the SSR so in our case the first one is uh it's going to be nemesis over here now what the majority of the guides actually don't tell you is that there is also this one over here weapons can be purchased at 120 coins which means that there is like a max pity you can hit 120 coins you can go and pick up that nemesis if you wanted to, but you must do it all within the banner period. So if I come back over here, you'll see that this banner is going to be running for three weeks. After these three weeks, those coins, this 120 coins is actually going to get converted into the standard pool stuff. And so what that means is that this 120 does not carry over. This statement down here is correct. The pity does not reset between caches. So if you stopped at 79 uh, on this banner and then you go onto the next banner, so say after Nemesis, we get Cobalt B. On the Cobalt B banner, there is going to be 79 pulls as well. However, you're going to lose those coins. And so those coins are not going to count towards Cobalt B. The only thing you get when we switch banner from Nemesis to again, for example, Cobalt B is this 79 to 80, 50% 50 chance. The 100% chance guarantee is at 120. And so what exactly this means is you should only pull on the limited banners 
if you have 120 of the red nucleuses, which is the only thing that you can use to pull on these limited ones. And so yeah, it's very, very dangerous because I've seen a lot of content creators. I've seen a lot of even this guide right here, which I think is fantastic. It doesn't mention that. It doesn't mention that these coins are going to expire and that you should only be pulling at 120 unless you want to play the coin flip every freaking time. I know that I don't want to play the coin flip every freaking time. I want that linear. I want that nemesis guaranteed. All right. And so those are two major points of information that I wanted to get out there. The gacha with the transferring of the coins and the some of the characters having changed skills like the flame resonance, etc, etc. So I'm going to come back over here and talk about these 15 things you must know. So massive, massive shout out to Zachum3080. He's even got the freaking footage here. But my guys, I'm just going to flick through this really, really quick because all of these are actually incredibly important. Like when he says you must know, you really must know. So let's start things off with infinite climb. The TLDR of this is that you can actually climb anything with infinite stamina. Like look at that. He's essentially jumping off and then double jumping and then holding on and then doing it over and over. And what this means is that you can actually consume little to no stamina to infinitely climb anywhere. As for number two, we have something called Jetpack Dash. So I actually think this is probably as important as the other one because they're both essentially like your exploration exploits, if you really want to call it that. I don't really want to call it that. I don't want to get banned for it. But the TLDR of this one is that essentially you go into the flying mode and then you dash and then you go back into flying mode. So what this means is that you actually get to go for longer distances higher instead of like, you know, just going down, down, down into your descent, right? So you can see he is getting more of the horizontal distance. All right, number three, we've got party teleport. Now, this one is actually pretty, all of these tips are honestly pretty insane. So the TLDR of this one is essentially as a party leader, or if you have a party, you can actually teleport to your party leader. If you're the party leader, you can summon them. If you're the party person, you can click on a button and it will teleport you to the location and line of the party leader. Now, this is really important because the party teleport will bypass the cooldown on swapping lines. That is honestly pretty game breaking, like literally, because if everybody is using a trick like this, that means that people could be skipping queues and stuff. So the server may not exactly like that and may overload, but this is a tip and trick. You're watching my videos. I, I get you ahead, my guys. I get you ahead. Number four, we have the free Colossus arms. So I think we also actually get the SSR selectors, but the TLDR is get these arms. They do a crap load of damage. Number five is hidden free pity. Okay, so this one is really, really interesting because when you look at the gacha, so if I have this one up here, you will see that there is a pity counter going up to 80. Now, there is actually a hidden pity at 30. So what that means is that you should be saving your SSR ticket. There is a guaranteed SSR ticket. Do not use the guaranteed SSR ticket. Save that guaranteed SSR ticket until you've done your 30 pulls, which is going to trigger the hidden SSR. And then after that, use your guaranteed SSR ticket to roll for something that you don't already have. So what that means is that after 30 pulls, you should actually end up with two different SSR weapons. Point number six, you can actually create relic and weapon sets. That is very, very self-explanatory. I am not going to talk too much about it. Number seven, you can explore with the full world map. However, of course, there are going to be those third party maps that you could have on another screen, just like seeing where all of the nucleus is, we're seeing all of the different puzzles are. I I'll probably recommend that. I'll probably drop one in the description below. Number eight, farm dungeons for weekly activity. Now, this one is really important because if you actually get to like towards the end of the week and you're like, oh crap, I haven't done all my weeklies, this is going to be a lifesaver. Weekly activities, even daily activities, you get a lot of rolls for them. And so it is in your best interest to actually go ahead and finish these ones there. And the real utility of this is that you can cap the weekly activity box in two to three days. So that is what I mean by like, if you are like, for example, it's Friday, you're like, oh God, I haven't done my weeklies. You can rush it, which is fantastic. Number nine, now I didn't actually know about this, but aerial attacks generally do more damage. It's self-explanatory, but like, to be honest, that's that's pretty cool. Like considering I like fighting in the air. Now we've got number 10, another aerial thing, aerial discharge skill. So using your discharge skill leaves you vulnerable to a lot of damage as you are locked in place during the animation. Now you can actually double jump before casting the discharge skills so you can avoid most enemy attacks. So essentially double jump, 
and then use the discharge skill. But there is a note actually that it may not be as effective on weapons that actually slams downwards, such as kings and merrills, because you get back down onto the floor, you're locked in place, and you're gonna get hit again anyway. Number 11, we've got passcode terminals. There's literally nothing to talk about for this one. It's essentially run around the map. When you get to a terminal, punch in these codes, and that's pretty much it. It's essentially a cheat code to everything. Now, number 12, this is a really interesting one. Break the goddamn shield. And I had this experience in the CBT as well, as well as C, and it's so freaking annoying, and which is why I'm going to actually recommend shield breakers over DPSs over support. Shield breakers are so freaking important. I don't even know like what this one is saying, but okay, it's saying break the goddamn shield. It's true. Break the goddamn shield. If you don't get a shield breaker in your 30 pulls over here, uh, this one over here, if you don't get a shield breaker, you get like a DPS like Samira or something, get the King, get the Meryl, get some sort of shield breaker. It will increase your DPS dramatically and the freaking shield is just so annoying. So yeah, what I just said is essentially the priorities for me personally when I actually go ahead and roll. Uh, if I do get a shield breaker from my 30 pity, then I'm going to be getting a DPS. And if I somehow luck into both of them, then I'll get a support. However, by the end of like your beginner rolls, you should have one of each of those classes. And my guys, you may ask, how exactly do I know if somebody is a shield breaker, a DPS or a support? Now, you can actually come over to this website, which is really, really well built, by the way. Whoever built this website, kudos to you guys. You can see the icons over here. This red one over here is DPS. This blue one over here is support. And then uh, this one over here, Mark, this is the shield breaker. So you do want these shield breaker bros first before you actually go ahead, pick up a DPS, and then support is probably your last priority. Now, something that trumps this kind of priority is you want the resonances. So for example, I click into Ruby over here. Ruby is gonna give you plus 20% attack. Bruh, that is just like freaking giga giga sick. And because this resonance is only found on Ruby and CN, and eventually, apparently, in global, on, uh, on Cobalt, these characters, in my opinion, actually take precedence over any shield breakers. So if they actually offer Cobalt, like somehow, maybe in the GSSR or something, grab Cobalt. And then after that, you can actually grab your shield breaker and DPS and whatever. Like, it's just that these resonances are incredibly future proof. However, seeing as Hotter Studios or Tower of Fantasy or whoever has actually already deviated from China with this, maybe the value of this flame resonance isn't going to be that high if, for example, like every two months or every month, they're going to release another character with the same flame resonance. So to be honest, like I myself might have just spouted some misinformation, but the unfortunate thing is that we actually just don't know anymore. And so yeah, as long as you understand these principles, what exactly I'm talking about, you can make the best decision moving forward. All right, that's enough about that one. Let's come back to this one over here. We've got 13 tap revive. Now this one is freaking sick because I actually didn't know about this either, but you can actually tap revive interact key and then dash away and they will still be revived. So that's instead of like, you know, the alternate is to actually just stand there, right? And so obviously the impact of this is that you are not gonna get freaking bashed by like the boss or whatever you're fighting and you can actually continue doing DPS. So there is just no reason to actually not do this. Number 14 is a pretty obvious one, especially for MMO players. So you can actually send the coordinates of a particular place. You can open it up. You can show people where exactly you're referring to. And yeah, not much to talk about for that one. And then number 15, we've got daily free simulacrum gifts. Now the TLDR is that in Tower of Fantasy, there are actually a lot of mini games. If you think about like Honkai Impact 3, if you think about, uh, yeah, I can't think of any others right now, but you kind of get the point, right? Like where you can do a side scroller or maybe you can do like, there's this kind of like ball game with a labyrinth. There are a couple of different mini games. This is one of them. So you can play a claw machine game three times a day and you earn gifts that raise your simulacras, affinity and friendship. Now, you do want to do this because these gifts are relatively scarce. Now, in terms of the value, I'm gonna be honest, I'm actually not sure of the value. I couldn't really tell what exactly it was doing, but that is just something to know for that one. Now, we got a bonus one down here, unstuck button. So if you ever get stuck somewhere, uh, you can actually just go into game settings and there is an unstuck button. Now, this is really interesting because I also heard that there is a delete account button. So what that means is that there is a possibility that the game is going to be a little bit reroll friendly. Now, that may, may be the last thing I'm going to talk about. If you actually want to reroll, uh, I would go check out a guide uh, somewhere on YouTube. Like my boy Vulcan has a couple, but essentially I think it is going to take about like 20 minutes to reroll. I'm still not sure if I'm going to reroll or not. I'm still on the side of I'm probably not going to reroll considering most of the characters that we're seeing at launch. So like including maybe not Cobalt B, but like uh, looking at Meryl, King, Crow, Samir, Shiro, etc, etc. They all get outclassed with the 2.0 update. And 
it kind of looks like the 2.0 update is going to be coming very, very soon, especially when they just freaking drop Nemesis out of nowhere. And so my guys, that is the end of the video. I really hope that you don't take these tips or whatever at face value. I really, really hope that you're learning more about the principles. You're learning that like, you know, this flame resonance is what's good. It's not that freaking, um, what's her name? It's not that Saki or Ruby are actually giga, giga strong. I mean, they probably are, but it's mainly because of this resonance that they are sought after. Stuff like that. Anyway, that is going to bring us to the end of the video. And so I want to leave you guys with a secret question. And that is, was this actually helpful? This is my first Tower of Fantasy video in a while of many more to come. This is going to be my main game. 100%. I will see you guys in the live launch. But my guys, let me know if it was actually useful down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving a comment, thank you guys so much. If you did enjoy this content or found it kind of helpful, please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel and turning on that notification bell. Otherwise, uh, as my girl, this hamster over here once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.